Oh, hot, 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 oh, hot, 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 hot. I thought this would be a fun little video concept to do. I found a Reddit thread talking about Hearthstone hot takes. And as a very opinionated person who's been playing a lot of Hearthstone over the past couple months, regardless, let's look at some hot takes. The first hot take I want to look at, I think is an interesting discussion. I absolutely despise secrets, all of them. People say that you can just play around them, especially in regards to stuff like counterspell and objection, but that's simply not true. Sure, technically you can play around them, but in reality, the metas in both wild and standard are so hyper-optimized and aggressive, delaying the opponent one turn by forcing them to use a cheap spell slash minion to play around the secret can, can and will win you the game. It doesn't help that they can be generated by other cards, counterspell and objection may not be oppressive on their own, but if you can generate two or three additional copies, that's a different story. I guess I'm gonna say I kind of agree right now on the technicality. Conceptually, secrets are the only way to interact with your opponent on their turn, and I think it's fine for them to exist in the game. The problem is, for the longest time, no one was playing secrets because they were bad. But when secrets become worthwhile for their mana cost, that's kind of when they become bad. When the secret aspect of the secret doesn't matter anymore. Like, you know what the card they're playing against is. You know it's objection and it's still going to be like efficient. I think the secret aspect of a secret is part of the mana cost. The fact you have to test for these various things. But when it comes to the point of, you know, every secret in your opponent's deck and you just have to like deal with it, that's when it's a bit oppressive, I think. Um, basically, when secrets are bad, they're good for the game. And when the secret card is just strong on its own, like Counterspell or Objection, it's a bit worse. So that makes it weird when secrets are like bad, so you don't want to play them and put them in your deck. It's almost like if maybe all secrets should be bad and then you can kind of just build secret decks about randomly putting in secrets. So then like, no matter, even though they're bad, you still have to play around like all of them instead of just playing around the ones you know exist. That may be too bad. Um, but yeah, kind of agree. The current form of secrets kind of shit for the game. Approved. Our next take, I'm going to be a bit more opinionated on. The game would be better were wild the main game mode and properly balanced. Hearthstone's biggest advantage is going mayhem, and wild is the perfect mode for a wide variety of archetypes, decks, and strategies. Just imagine if older archetypes like Murloc Paladin, Cthune, or Beast Druid saw frequent new support, and Blizzard were about to constantly balance and patch for healthy metas so that many strategies as possible were relevant at all times. The only reason it's not is because it's a lot cheaper to play in the long run so Blizz would have to shift their monetization towards cosmetics. First thing I'm going to point out, Blizzard's already shifting their monetization towards cosmetics. We're getting Diamond Hero skins, like, it already is this way. Um, I'm a staunch Wild hater. I think Wild sucks. I've been dusting my collection since Gadget Zan because I don't give a shit to play Wild. <laughs> um, I agree with the point. I think it would be cool if old archetypes like Murloc Paladin, Cthulhu, or Beast Druid saw frequent and new support, but I also think they kind of already do in that sense. Um, I think the rotating core set is the correct answer for this. Like, um, imagine the expansion one next year, they bring Cthulhu back. Just the OG old gods Cthulhu back into standard, throw all the support cards in, add a bunch of new support cards. They can still do that with the current archetypes. But the problem is wild sucks. Wild is a fever dream where you think you can play your favorite decks from all time. 
but in reality, you're going to be playing against the worst decks of all time. The amount of cards in Wild is going to mean every single new expansion is less and less and less and less important, which is an awful decision for the game. Um, and leads to power creep like we've had recently, where if the cards are meant to be played in Wild, you have to just power creep the game more and more and more. And that's been a huge problem recently. Um, I'm calling this a bad take. Next take, aggro decks take more skill than control decks. You have roughly seven turns or less to line up everything. Control just has to draw two out of the eight board clears and it wins. Don't kill me for this. OP literally asked for a hot take. You know what? This is a hot take and I am going to. I kind of disagree, but I also kind of agree. I think it's a very meta dependent thing when aggro decks are generally the most strong thing in the meta and like there's not particularly strong board clears in the meta then yeah aggro is much easier than control but i think it just comes down to you know aggro decks can be easier when it's an aggro meta and control decks are easier when it's a control meta you know it's just about like which decks are better in reality um i love i i think Though, if we were to look at it simply as if in taking into account both in a control oriented meta, it is probably easier. It is still probably easier to play control in a tr control oriented meta than aggro in an aggro oriented meta. And I say that uh, watching a, <laughs> a lot of people be bad. Um, I think there's a fundamental large part of Hearthstone players who value trading way too much. And I abuse this all the time in aggro matchups on ladder. Like you give more of a shit about trading than I do. And then your health total hits zero before mine does. It's uh rather simple. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to say I agree with this take. And I'm gonna, I, I support the take. Maple Nut approved. Approved. Old School Mill Rogue was the most fun deck in the history of Hearthstone and nothing beats it even to this day. You know what? I will give it to you. That is a hot deck. I cannot argue on what you personally find the most fun, but there is a lot of satisfaction in those mill type decks. Um, and so why cards like Gnome Feratu were so popular despite eh, uh, potentially being suboptimal is the way I'll describe it. And then everyone tries to bring Mill back, um, like do process and stuff. Um, this is a hot take. Um, while personally not my favorite deck in the history of Hearthstone, I'm going to approve of this hot take regardless. Approved. Approved. Arena should have a free-to-play mode with noble rewards, similar to how duels had a casual free-to-play mode. I love Arena. Arena's... I, I love Arena. Uh, it's not my most played because I, for the most part, I'm free-to-play. I think I've probably spent 50 bucks on the game in total over, like, the course of since Mean Streets of Gadgets and uh so free to play arena mode but no rewards similar to how duels had casual free to play mode you know what i agree um i don't know how often i'd play it i love arena and i like the rewards at stake i like the entry cost um it makes it feel you know i guess the adrenaline pump in the bit it makes it feel um better when you pull off something successful but i also understand that as a barrier to entry and the game mode is kind of just fun enough that um it's probably fine to just do a free-to-play mode like sure you're gonna have people insta conceding and uh uh trying to get the best possible decks and and roll but i don't think i don't see any harm in this is basically the, the idea i love arena 
I wouldn't I don't think I'd play a free to play mode but they I don't see a reason why not like unless they're gonna remove arena like it's duels which I'd complain like real hard but eh, no, why not approved approved singleton decks aren't as inconsistent as everyone believes in the current state of hearthstone 100 percent agree this is probably like a big hot take but i absolutely agree um two things lead to the strength or i guess the consistency of um singleton decks right now or highlander decks is that card draw is much more abundant than it was before and specifically tutoring before the nerfs i was playing tentacle warrior with a deep minor brand and oh it's a degenerate deck whatever um but basically um Tyrion forging with tutor brand i had the mustache painter to tutor brand or Tyrion, or the tentacles so that's two tutors already and then I ran as tech options, uh, oh, Tortolan Protector and two mana draw two taunt minions from your deck to draw my tutor. And I had, that's like at least three tutors for my Highlander card, giving me four of 30 chance to basically draw my Highlander card before turn six. Uh, which is very strong that in combination with the sheer card quality when uh singleton and highlander were first introduced the power level of the game was much much lower than it is right now so basically people had to counteract these powerful highlander effects by putting in suboptimal cards and now, I don't even know if I'd say there are many suboptimal cards. There are cards that, okay, I guess there are suboptimal cards, but they're not bad. Like, no one's running Tortolan Forager, and I was running that in my singleton deck, but it's a good card. People used to run it because it's a damn good card. It's just slightly suboptimal, but the slightly suboptimal is still pretty damn good. And that leads to two major things with the uh, Highlander decks right now is they're good because there's more good cards. The downside of having to put bad cards in your deck is gone. You can tutor your shit. Uh, this is just absolutely correct. Approved. Approved. We're going to do these three ones because they're basically uh, very quick. People who lose a lot or have less skill complain the most. Absolutely true. Um, I'd rather pay a subscription type of thing for single player adventure run type of deal like the old Doom one. That would be so much fun if they kept updating it and so on. I love how it kind of reminds me of roguelike games. I love the single player game modes in Hearthstone. I would not pay a subscription service for them, but I would pay like a flat price for one. Mercenaries is the stupidest game mode and I don't understand how people enjoy it. Yes, it is absolutely stupid. The concept of them trying to throw another gacha game inside of hearthstone was really stupid the um single player aspects of it too sucked the three color system where what just is rock paper scissors is moronic in design for this kind of game and um yeah mercenaries is awful just at everything approved 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 Flare should have priority over Counterspell. The current interaction is dumb. Base take, absolutely true. I understand how the current interaction works. That Counterspell counters the next spell you play and Flare is the next spell you play. Therefore, Counterspell counters Flare before the effects of Flare go off. But Flare is a tech card designed to counter secrets. There, sh there shouldn't be a secret that then counters the tech card. You already don't want to play the tech card in your deck. So it it's it's really dumb. Technically, the interaction makes sense, but um, it really should function the other way around. Based. Approved. Approved. Warrior as a whole is not that oppressive. If you don't drop Bran on turn 6 to 8, the deck is kind of bad. 
um that is exactly why the deck is oppressive it heavily relies on you just playing bran on turn six uh, or i guess play bran as early as possible and then you can win the game yeah that's oppressive um it's not oppressive in the fact that it's literally the strongest deck in the meta it's oppressive because as soon as you play one card the game is over for half the archetypes in the game you're almost at the point there you're like you're like almost at the point bad take the fact you can't communicate with anyone other than useless emotes absolutely agree um i hate all the hero skins and like hero cards having like different emotes and i'm trying to say something and then like they're kind of saying it like thematically to the hero and it's like no i wanted to say like greetings and like i'm trying to be friendly here as so i'm like ah i see you're playing hunter right now as well i will or, I will say greetings and then my hunter guy is like your head will make a nice rug and I'm like well that's a threat but that was greetings and it's just not clear what these emotes are being I don't like that base take approved approved Stormwind to Alterac was very fun it might have been the best the game has ever been that's a pretty damn hot take as I think Stormwind is kind of universally seen as the worst meta in Hearthstone history. If you like it, all the better for you. I am jealous of your ability to find enjoyment in uh, such atrocious things as the Stormwind meta. But um, it sounds like Hearthstone's just not the game for you. Uh, try Yu-Gi-Oh! I heard there's a bird deck that may interest you. I miss when Oasis Snapjaw was a card worth considering because its ability to kill two three twos and still have a board presence two turns later was genuinely compelling to me. Like, I could just say I miss when minions could survive without being instantly removed, but I think that's a pretty cold take. I specifically miss when the meta was that slow. This is a burning hot take, and I absolutely compel you as. <laughs> For your oasis snapjaw love i had to google what this card was because i couldn't remember what the fuck you were talking about and i will i am i approve now it ain't the kind of thing i'm personally uh fond of but you know what this is a hot take and i think it's an approvable hot take you know you miss you miss it and I think fundamentally Hearthstone has strayed away from that. And they could go a little bit back in that direction. I wouldn't mind. Uh, gotta love me some blank text cards. You know, good stats for the cost and all that. Approved. Approved. Mercenaries had a lot of potential and should have been more PvP focused. Um... Did mercenaries have potential? Yes. Um, I think the three squad based thing was compelling in concept. I think like the selecting spells and like items to put on shit was compelling. Um, I think the PVP was dog shit and I think it should have gone more single player focused, but I admit there's also probably a variation you could have made in the game to compel more to PVP and it would have been just as fine without all the grinding. I think it could would have worked better single player but doesn't mean there couldn't have been a version of the game that could have been pvp focused mercenaries was a huge drop ball so yeah you know what i kind of agree i agree with the mercenaries had potential i wouldn't have made it pvp but um that doesn't mean it's impossible to make it pvp um if you drop like a lot of the grinding basically but you know what i'm gonna I'm gonna not approve. Wait, no, I approve your take, but I disagree. Should not have been PvP, but I approve that you think it should have. Approved. Open the way gate shouldn't be a once per game card. This is a steaming hot take, and it is one of the worst takes I've ever heard. There's no reason it shouldn't be. Just win the game on that one extra turn. It's wild format. You know, just OT, just play the card OTK. No need to just like waste people's time. One of the worst takes I've ever seen. Try, try, try. 
not being able to play on your opponent's turn was a terrible design choice. You can't have a good card game within no, with no live interaction. It's a very steaming hot take. It's got a negative upvote. That ain't good. Um, I absolutely disagree with this. Um, not being able to play on your opponent's turn is actually the only reason I play Hearthstone. Um, but I'll also say there are other card games that are like, like the Pokemon TCG. I'm pretty sure you don't play on your opponent's turn. And like, I don't know. I think you can dislike the fact it's not there, but I don't think it's inherently like a bad design choice. It's just potentially limiting, which it's fine. Like sometimes limitations are good, you know? You don't need to be able to do everything. And I don't like the card games where you play on your opponent's turn because the amount of times is like, do you want to make an action? And I'm like, no, do you want to make an action? No, you know, they're, they're going to play their spell. Do you want to counter it? No, they're going to play the next one. Do you want to counter it? No. And it's like, I'm saving my counter spell for one specific thing. And I got to go through all these extra actions throughout the course of a game just to say, no, 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 no. I don't want to do shit. Um, and they gotta ask you otherwise uh it's obvious that you don't have counter spell in your hand if it doesn't ask you do you want to counter do you want to counter spell every time they play something and it's uh it's a lot more it feels a lot more wasteful of my time i'm the kind of hearthstone player who is like i'm watching tv or whatever and i'm just gonna look down when it's my turn see what i have to do and then play um and honestly that's what i like about hearthstone is the lack of interaction on your opponent's turn and you know it's just sometimes throwing down a bunch of shit on the ground and saying deal with it oh bad take bad take specifically saying you can't have a good card game with no live interaction and that is a terrible design choice it is a design choice they made and it is a design choice they are sticking with not liking Hearthstone because of the lack of live interaction is a valid opinion to have, but saying that it is objectively bad because it doesn't have that is wrong. Bad take. Not approved. Now, this take saved for last for as I think it has the most uh, kind of discussion around this. As long as the game relies heavily on RNG for big fun moments, it will never be a great competitive game. Now, I have played in competitive Hearthstone tournaments and I have played heavily on RNG. Um, specifically, I have played Thief Rogue with academic espionage and augmented Alex in collegiate tournaments. <laughs> Um, it is really fun to play those decks and, um, it will never be a great competitive game because of that is, is that true? Kind of. I see the fact it's like for big quote unquote fun moments. I get that. I think this is a lot more targeted at something like Yogg Saron, which yeah, I can kind of agree with Yogg being that case or like solarium prime being the case but it comes down to you are including these cards in your deck for a reason you are giving up some consistency for a chance and like it's a valid deck building decision making process and generally in competitive environments when you're it's not just a best of one it is um a lot more reasonable uh you know pavel getting uh polymorph from the babbling book is uh very much pointed as this game it can't be competitive because of that and it's like yeah that was really good luck but it's not like pavel was playing bad the rest of the tournament sometimes it takes a little bit of luck and you know what it doesn't mean you can't take the game competitively, and I think it's the RNG that makes taking it competitively fun. Um, if you look back at the old days of Hearthstone, um, I think the game was still very random. 
back at that point and in a much less fun way too you know you just like coin innervate yeti on turn one big edwin turn one it's like well i'm fucked you know they, they got a 10 10 i got there's nothing i can do about it you can insta concede turn one turn two because of this shit and um that existed like all the way back in classic and i wouldn't even call those like bi the typical big fun rng moments that's just the rng of drawing cards draw rng exists and i think a lot more hearthstone is shifting away from draw rng to be a primary like source of rng to this added like discover mechanic stuff and as other games like magic you can get landlocked and it sucks and you lose and it happens but i think it happens in all kind of card games but i don't know if i would consider a lot of these card games to be great competitive games regardless but that's just my take on competitive games i think it is fun to take these games competitively but if you want to consider like great quote unquote great competitiveness i do think taking the rng out of it is like a big factor but I don't, it wouldn't be Hearthstone without it. And I wouldn't want to play Hearthstone without it. Um, I wouldn't want to play Hearthstone competitively without it. Um, honestly, I don't even really want to play Hearthstone competitively right now. But hey, if I was like playing in a small tournament, I wouldn't mind that. I like to like, you know, bring a couple deck formats. It's a lot more fun thinking that way than uh, just playing on ladder. But um, yeah, I think this is an interesting discussion. And I would... I'm going to disagree. And really, I think the entire thing comes down to how do you define a great competitive game? I know how I would. I don't even know. Okay. I don't know how I would define it, but I would know what I would look for in a great competitive game. And the big RNG is not something I would specifically look for. Although I would love to play it. Difference. And I will leave this open-ended, refusing to, uh, like, give a yes or a no on this. I will approve this as a hot take, and I will approve it as a topic of discussion. But I will neither agree nor disagree with this, because a great competitive game is, uh, not really a definition we have here. I may do, uh, some more hearthstone content in the near future i'm planning on doing hearthstone content like later but um i'm still kind of on a, my hiatus away from twitch and uh i'm on like a little break before i continue on with uh, my schooling and then when i'm back in the fall uh to streaming i'll try to make more content uh I may make some like shitty videos for my MacBook on expansions because I think I have. I like talking about Hearthstone. It's it's a fun stuff. This fun stuff to talk about. I like talking about it. I like theorizing. And um, when it is time to like predict the quality of sets and mini sets and stuff, I will never get anything wrong. Um, I can perfectly predict the meta like years before it like even happens like straight up not this year but like next year when they're doing like year of the raptor um the third expansion i'm gonna tell you um deathwing druid is gonna get like that's gonna be the expansion deck third expansion year of the raptor next year deathwing druid anyway uh thanks everyone who stuck around peace out till next time